Hello! Welcome to part four of preparing my houseplants for spring. It's been a long journey that we've been through together <laughs> from hating my houseplant collection to bringing back my joy from it, rearranging everything, repotting what I needed to repot and now we're at the final stage of what I generally do to prepare them for spring and that is pest treatment and cleaning leaves, which are really one and the same, which is why I'm including them both in the same video because they really, uh, like cleaning leaves also prevents pests and prevents pests also involves cleaning leaves. So you know what I mean? They're both intertwined. So I haven't ever done a pest treatment video on my channel and there are a couple of reasons why that is. Number one, I've been through my own journey of treating pests and it hasn't been a smooth one. I also have never felt in a position where I've totally gotten on top of my pest problem in my houseplant collection, which sometimes in the back of my head makes me think, oh, I'm not like knowledgeable enough to be telling people how to treat their pests when I'm like barely under control of my pests. However, what I've come to realize is that pest treatment for me and for a lot of people out there too, which is essentially a management of pests. It's not eradication. It's not like killing them all. It's not, it's never that level of control. Um, and that is if you are going down more of an organic or natural route when it comes to pest management. If you are using chemicals or anything like that to kill pests on your plants, you're going to kill the pests, you're also going to kill all of the good stuff, which we love, our soil mites, our springtails, our good friends that keep our plants really happy. Now, I'm not going to stand here and act like I have always been 100% organic with my houseplant collection. While that was always my aim, I definitely went through a period of using chemicals on my plants in certain times. Definitely, and, and that is a huge reason why I also haven't made a pest management video because I wasn't really proud of that. It's not something I never want to do. It's definitely something I've stopped doing and will never do again. But I want to be upfront and honest with you about different things that I've tried along that journey. Let's go to pest treatment or pest management. Things that I have tried to have, like I said, included chemical means, included bathing plants, included, um, you know, brush treatments, uh, showering, all things like that. So as far as the chemicals went, the reason I resorted to that was because around the end of 2020, I believe, I got a massive thrips infestation. The year where everybody got hundreds of plants, lots of new plants being introduced to environment, lots of different pests coming from different garden centers and online shops, all coming together, massive thrips infestation, wasn't used to pest um, management on that level. And so I got totally overwhelmed and that's why I resorted to a chemical solution. I think that's, to be honest, I think a lot of people go through that and a lot of people did buy a lot of plants, introduce a lot of pests and therefore things just got out of control. And it's kind of when it gets to that stage, especially with something like thrips, which are so hard to kind of identify until the problem is so bad that you can't control it. If you get in that scenario, it's kind of like, do I let all my pests, my, do I let all my plants die because I've made this massive mistake and also lose a lot of money? Because let's be honest, if you're having hundreds of plants, you're paying money for them usually if you get them in a quick um, or a short time period. Or do I just treat with chemicals once or twice, get it under control and then learn from that? That was kind of the approach that I went to. Then on a different occasion, maybe six months later, 2021 we're talking here, and maybe even the beginning of 2022, when I was in periods of my life that my houseplant collection was just, it couldn't be a priority. It just couldn't. There was just too many other things going on in my life from one thing to the next 
that happens in life. I, and I wasn't on top of my pest treatment and so things got out of control and I did resort to chemicals, using them once or twice over a period of a month, maybe treating them twice in a month and then, then I stopped. So I haven't used pests now for the best part of a year or a what the, my brain is not working today, guys. I haven't used anything chemical on my plants for the best part of a year, and that was kind of a decision I made. While I was organic most of the time, I was kind of like, I don't want to do this. Like, if I'm having a hobby, hobby that requires me to use something like that, I don't want to use it. While saying that, chemicals in a really controlled environment, for example, the way I would do it is put them in the bath, windows open, shouldn't be inhaling that stuff. Plug in the bath because your drain goes somewhere, your drain goes somewhere, it ends up in a river, it ends up in a treatment plant, it ends up in the sea or wherever you are. Water always goes somewhere and so I was really hyper like, oh my god, I don't want this to enter the water system. So I would plug the bath and I would spray down my plants. I'd wear a mask and gloves because it's very bad for your skin. And I would leave the plants there for at least 24 hours until they were all totally dry. And then I would put them back in their space. Obviously I have a dog as well, I have a pet. I didn't want any interactions with that. And also um, then once it was dry, I would clean the bath before rinsing anything down. So that was how I tried to manage it as best I could. Obviously, following the instructions on whatever chemical that you're using is really, really, really important. Please, if you are going to use them, be very careful of those things. Generally, they will end up in the environment and that is why I don't like to use things like this and why I never will again. So I'm coming with you with that honesty today up front. However, I have learned a couple of things <laughs> in my process about how to manage them organically and it has worked for me. I think personally that if you are starting your houseplant collection and you're buying a lot of plants and you're constantly introducing them and you're also maybe not as familiar with care and pest treatment practices, you're probably going to come into a situation that I did where it's overwhelming, it's taking over your collection and you cannot manage it. You're going to want to research these things before you go get yourself into that scenario. And I'm not saying that you have to use chemicals, but what I'm saying is you might need to isolate your plants, you might need to treat them with organic means far more regularly so that you know it won't get out of control. These were things that I wasn't really aware of at the time. So I'm hoping to cover that in this video. I am not going to cover different types of pests and things like that. I'm not gonna get into that in this video. This is a, how I prepare them for spring. This is just going to cover the way I treat my plants to prevent and manage pests. The pest treatment that I use is the same for prevention and also management of an active infestation. So that is essentially, the treatment is the same, but it's the frequency of that treatment that changes based off whether it's currently infested or it's just a prevention measure. Every month I will treat all of my plants with a preventative measure. If a plant is, if I notice that a certain plant is infested or there's some kind of pest on there that we don't want, I will immediately isolate that plant and the plants that are in closest proximity to it. Now, obviously, as you can see in my houseplant collection, my plants are all touching each other and they're all on top of each other. I will take like maybe a four plant radius around that plant and I will include that as if it is actively infected or in, it has an active infestation. So what I'll do with them first is I'll put them in the bath and I will treat them and I will leave them in the bath for a good week, two weeks, probably two weeks, and I would continuously treat them until I'm totally sure that that infestation is under control before I put them back in their normal spot in the house bank collection office. The same thing with if I get a new plant in, that plant is going to be isolated before it goes into gen pop, okay? It is going to be in the bath. The bath is the 
is the spot for all my plants to be very honest i will isolate them it's pretty good light in there it's not so warm all the time but it's pretty warm and in general i won't be buying a lot of house plants in winter anyway and in the summer it's totally fine to leave the, that plant in there you have to understand that when you bring your plant home it's going to be having to adjust to a new environment which will be the bath and the bathroom and then once it's been effectively treated and isolated, then it's going to have to readjust to a new um, environment in this office. That's a lot of stress for the plant. It's, it's adjusting to an environment essentially twice. With all of that background, I'm going to now go through my pest treatment apertoire. <laughs> so all the things that I use and keep in my kind of plant toolkit in order to treat for pests. So there's a couple of things that I do. Cleaning leaves not only improves the ability of the plant to undertake photosynthesis, which I will have a plant basics video up for you on. Either it's already up or it's coming. It removes dust, it removes um, like water spots, salt, it removes you know just it just good general plant care i think in in because we don't have rain indoors like that um like heavy rains and stuff like that i think that it just really helps keep the plant clean and healthy um so cleaning the leaves essentially also treats for pests so what i generally use for that is I have two kind of solutions that I will use. The first, a mixture of alcohol and water. And obviously you have to be careful about the concentrations of these things. I say that, but I never measure, but I just kind of know, like I'll, I'll put a little bit of alcohol and then loads of water and that will be enough. You don't want to be burning the leaves of your plant with alcohol, but you do, will remember that when you're putting that on your plant leaves, alcohol evaporates really easily it's not going to sit on the leaves for a long amount of time but it will be enough to kill anything that's there so in Ireland it's quite difficult actually to buy a bottle of isopropyl alcohol which would be the preferred um, alcohol that I would like to use for these things but it's actually quite hard to find here I'm not totally sure why that is but I do I, from what I hear on other plant channels in the US, it is easier to find there, so you can use that. But here, the alternative that I found is surgical spirit, which is essentially alcohol as well. So this is pretty cheap. It's about 4.95 euros, about five euros for a bottle this size, and this will last me quite a bit. Essentially, it's ethanol and methanol. <laughs> it's, it's alcohol. So it's the same thing, really. We can use this for many different things. Um, it's actually just such a great thing to have in the house, even for electronics or anything like that. But I will mix up a small bit of this and a lot of water, and I will either use it on a spray bottle, of which I have this. You may have seen this on old videos of my channel. I still have it. It's the best thing ever. It's basically like a pressurized um, water sprayer or just sprayer in general. You can spray loads of things with it. There's a pump here. So you load up the pump and then you can spray and it and you can also adjust this to create like a really fine spray. This is amazing because I can put like 15 plants in the bath and I will just spray them all down. Make sure that every side of that leaf is sprayed on the backs of the leaves, the top of the soil sometimes, and you know, I would just spray the entire thing. This is essential for any um, cleaning or pest treatment for me anyway. It's really, really good. There's loads of different versions of these as well. This is a two liter version. You can get massive ones, with really big pumps just makes it so much faster than I used to use like a hand spray bottle and it would take so long and be really like tough on your fingers after some time. I will put the alcohol and water in there and I will spray everything down. I will let it sit for maybe 30 minutes and then I'll go in with a microfiber cloth like one of these and I will gently wipe down everything and um, that will just help not to create any spots on the leaves or anything the same things clean the leaves or if I don't feel like spraying or I want to do it in the spot I will just um, spray some of the alcohol and water straight onto the cloth and wipe down the leaves that way 
So that's my first kind of mixture that I will use. And I mean, alcohol really just kills any kind of pest that you have. It will kill eggs, it will kill spider mites, thrips, thrips are just ugh, but it will um, mealybugs and um, scale is a little bit trickier. I would always kind of pick off, if it's a hard scale, I will pick off the hard scale and then treat with the alcohol because sometimes their outer shell is so thick that it doesn't penetrate correctly, but it will essentially work for every pest. It's kind of a generalist thing. That is one thing that I use. The second thing, now if you didn't know, soap and kind of a lather will essentially kill most soft bodies insects. And I say soft body because um, scale with their hard shell again you'd want to break through that generally they'd be on the stems you can just flick them off with your finger and then you can treat but most of the other pests that we'd have on our on our house plants are soft bodied and this will work on the soap that I use is an organic mild soap like pure castile soap this is Dr Bronner's this is like classic 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 stuff it's healthy to use in water courses you know it's vegan it is certified organic you want for this to work on your plants you want like it to be soapy you want suds suds is kind of irish version of that but you want a really good lather so to create that, I will generally actually use an old makeup brush. Now, this is not the one that I normally use. I can't find it, but this, so it has makeup on it, but essentially something like this, something that has a fluffy top. And I will swirl that in the mixture, and then you basically just paint that all over your plants. Your stems, your the fronts and backs of the leaves, the petioles, everywhere, everywhere, okay? And then I will leave it on for a while so for it to work. It's like washing your hands. You need to give it a bit of time to actually work. And then you can either spray it back down or just leave it. Like it's fine to, it's not harmful. This stuff is not harmful to the leaves. As far as the concentration of this, I don't think it really matters. You just want a lather. As much as you need to make that happen is enough, I think. So yeah, that's essentially what I use. Both of these techniques I think are really, really good and do work, but I find the best way for them to work is to alternate them. So I will either do a soap mixture and treat with that, and then maybe the next week I will treat with alcohol, depending on whether there's an active infestation or not. If there is an active infestation, it really depends on what type of pest that it is. If it's spider mice or if it's thrips, I'm gonna be treating every day for at least a week, and then maybe after that every two or three days, up to a full two weeks or even three weeks, depending on what's going on and they will be in the bath for that entire period just to make it easier i just walk in treat them leave it takes 10 five ten minutes and um, depending on how many plants but essentially it's only it, normally it's only a few if there isn't an active infestation i will generally alter my pest treatment based off two things number one the time of year Pests generally will emerge early spring or when we're changing from summer into winter, summer into autumn or winter. And I will always treat a good bit during this time period just to prevent anything from coming up. So I will try to treat every two weeks. To be honest, it's probably every three to four weeks around those periods. Maybe do it twice um, during those periods. Other than that, I would probably treat for pests, to be honest, maybe every month and a half, every two months, other than that. The second time that I would treat for pests is when there's a new plant in the collection. I cannot stress enough, this is where you're introducing things, okay? Other than that, like if I, if I found that the less that I buy new plants, the less pest issues I have. And that's because obviously I've treated a certain amount, I've gotten rid of certain populations. They're really not going to be really fully introduced back into my ecosystem of my office unless I'm introducing something in or I'm leaving windows open a lot or anything like that. But generally it's when a new plant comes in. And I find a lot of plants that will come in do have pests and I always treat them as if they have an active infestation. And like I said, I'll isolate them, I'll put them in the bath and I will treat them as if it's an active infestation every day 
or up to a week and then up to two weeks every two or three days and then we'll see how it does i might observe it a little bit see does anything come up and see how that goes one thing i will say is that you'll never be a hundred percent pest free when you have a lot of houseplants that just doesn't exist there will always be something going on and I know that when you first start out your collection that can cause you a lot of stress and make you feel really freaked out. Don't freak out, it's just a plant. It's just a plant. It's fine, you're fine. Just deal with it at the time. You see a, pe you see a pest on a plant, you take the plant, you treat it and it will be fine. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support over this four parter and um, for, for coming on this little journey with me and falling in love with my plants again. I am happy to say that I am feeling love for my collection again. I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling like I wanna do experiments and just play with my plants and be with them and hang out with them. And I'm really, really happy that I've managed to get to that stage and a lot of that has been accountability on the YouTube channel and pushing myself and also just being able to share this as well with you has been a huge motivation for me and has made me feel really good again so yes just thank you so much for the support if you do want to support me a great free way to do it is to interact with this video in any way that you can whether it's a like a comment or even a subscribe if you enjoy my content i really appreciate it other than that i will see you in the next video bye